Hello, my name is Rosalind Arcanel, and I'm a role player in the Weaves of the Wheel role playing game on Instagram. I'm going to read Chapter 16 The Wisdom from The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Perrin led the way into the depths of the inn. Rand was so intent on what he intended to say to Nynaeve that he did not see Min until she seized his arm and pulled him to one side. The others kept on a few steps down the hall before realizing he had stopped. Then they halted too, half impatient to go on, half reluctant to do so. We don't have time for that boy, Tom said gruffly. Min gave the white-haired gleam in a sharp look. Go juggle something, she snapped, drawing Rand further away from the others. I, I really don't have time, Rand told her. Certainly not for any more fool talk about escaping and the like. He tried to get his arm loose, but every time he pulled free, she grabbed it again. And I don't have time for your foolishness either. Will you be still? She gave the others a quick look, then moved closer, lowering her voice. A woman arrived a little while ago, shorter than I, young, with dark eyes and dark hair and a braid down to her waist. She's part of it, right along with the rest of you. For a minute, Rand just stared at her. Nynaeve, how can she be involved? Light, how can I be involved? That's impossible. You know her? Min whispered. Yes, and she can't be mixed in, in whatever it is you, the sparks, Rand. She met Mistress Alice coming in and there were sparks with just the two of them. Yesterday, I couldn't see sparks without at least three or four of you together. But today, it's all sharper and more furious. She looked at Rand's friends, waiting impatiently, and shivered before turning back to him. It's almost a wonder the inn doesn't catch fire. You're all in more danger today than yesterday, since she came. Rand glanced at his friends. Tom, his brows drawn down in a bushy V, was leaning forward on the point of taking some action to hurry him along. She won't do anything to hurt us, he told Min. I have to go, now. He succeeded in getting his arm back this time. Ignoring her squawk, he joined the others and they started off again down the corridor. Rand looked back once. Min shook her fist at him and stamped her foot. What did she have to say? Matt asked. My knave is part of it. Rand said without thinking, then shot Matt a hard look that caught him with his mouth open. Then understanding slowly spread across Matt's face. Part of what? Thomas said softly. Does that girl know something? While Rand was still trying to gather in his head what to say, Matt spoke up. Of course she's part of it, he said grumpily. Part of the same bad luck we've been having since winter night. Maybe having the wisdom show up is no great affair to you, but I'd as soon have the white cloaks here myself. She saw my knave arrive, Rand said, saw her talking to Mistress Alice, and thought she might have something to do with us. Tom gave him a sidelong look and ruffled his mustaches with a snort. But the others seemed to accept Rand's explanation. He did not like keeping secrets from his friends, but Min's secret could be as dangerous for her as any of theirs was for them. Pins, Perrin stopped suddenly in front of a door, and despite his size, he seemed oddly hesitant. He drew a deep breath, looked at his companions, took another breath, then slowly opened the door and went in. One by one, the rest of them followed. Rand was the last, and he closed the door behind him with the utmost reluctance. It was the room where they had eaten the night before. A blaze crackled on the hearth and a polished silver tray sat in the middle of the table holding a gleaming silver pitcher and cups. Moraine and Nenave sat at opposite ends of the table, neither taking her eyes from the other. All the other chairs were empty. Moraine's hands rested on that table as still as her face. Nynaeve's braid was thrown over her shoulder. The end gripped in one fist. She kept giving it little tugs, the way she did when she was being even more stubborn than usual with the village council. Perrin was right. Despite the fire, it seemed freezing cold and all coming from the two women at the table. Lan was leaning against the mantel, staring into the flames and rubbing his hands for warmth. Egwene, 
her back flat against the wall, had her cloak on with the hood pulled up. Tom, Matt, and Perrin stopped uncertainly in front of the door. Shrugging uncomfortably, Rand walked to the table. Sometimes you have to grab the wolf by the ears, he reminded himself. But he remembered another saying, too. When you have a wolf by the ears, it's as hard to let go as to hold on. He felt Moraine's eyes on him, and Nynaeve's, and his face became hot. But he sat down anyway, halfway between the two. For a minute, the room was as still as a carving. Then Egwene and Perrin, and finally Matt, took, made their reluctant way to the table and took seats. Toward the middle, with Rand. Egwene tugged her hood further forward, enough to half hide her face, and they all avoided looking at anyone. Well, Tom snorted from his place beside the door, at least that much is done. Since everyone is here, Lan said, leaving the fireplace and filling one of the silver cups with wine, perhaps you will finally take this? He preferred the cup to Nanave. She looked at it suspiciously. There is no need to be afraid, he said patiently. You saw the innkeeper bring the wine and neither of us has had a chance to put anything in it. It is quite safe. The, the wisdom's mouth tightened angrily at the word afraid. But she took the cup with a murmured, thank you. I am interested, he said, in how you find us, found us. So am I, Moraine leaned forward intently. Perhaps you are willing to speak now that Egwene and the boys have been brought to you? Nynaeve sipped the wine before answering the Aes Sedai. There was nowhere for you to go except Berlon. To be safe, though, I followed your trail. You certainly cut back and forth enough, but then I suppose you would not care to risk meeting decent people. You followed our trail, Lan said truly surprised for the first time that Rand could remember. I must be getting careless. You left very little trace, but I can track as well as any man in the two rivers, except perhaps Tam Althor. She hesitated, then added. Until my father died, he took me hunting with him and taught me what he would have taught the sons he never had. She looked at Land challengingly, but he only nodded with approval. If you can follow a trail I have tried to hide, he taught you well. Few can do that, even in the borderlands. Abruptly, Nynaeve buried her face in her cup. Rand's eyes widened. She was blushing. Nynaeve never showed herself even the least bit disconcerted. Angry, yes. Outraged, often. But never out of countenance. But she was certainly red-cheeked now and trying to hide in the wine. Perhaps now, Maureen said quietly, you will answer a few of my questions? I have answered yours freely enough. With a great sack full of Gleeman's tales, Nynaeve retorted, the only facts I can see are that four young people have been carried off for the light alone knows what reason by an Aes Sedai. You have been told that isn't known here, Lan said sharply. You must learn to guard your tongue. Why should I? Nynaeve demanded. Why should I help you or help hide you or what you are? I've come to take Egwene and the boys back to Emmonsfield, not to help you spirit them away. Tom broke in in a scornful voice. If you want them to see their village again, or you either, you had better be more careful. There are those in Berlon who would kill her, he jerked his head toward Moraine, for what she is. Him too, he indicated Lan, then abruptly moved forward to put his fists on the table. He loomed over Nynaeve and his long mustaches and thick eyebrows suddenly seemed threatening. Her eyes widened, and she started to lean back away from him. Then her back stiffened defiantly. Tom did not appear to notice. He went right on in an ominously soft voice. They'd swarm over this inn like murderous ants on a rumor, a whisper. Their hate is that strong their desire to kill or take any like these two. And the girl, the boys, you, you are all associated with them, enough for the white cloaks anyway. You wouldn't like the way they ask questions, especially when the white tower is involved. 
white cloak questioners assume you're guilty before they start and they have only one sentence for that kind of guilt. They don't care about finding the truth. They think they know that already. All they go after with their hot irons and pinchers is a confession. Best you remember some secrets are too dangerous for saying aloud, even when you think you know who hears. He straightened with a muttered, I seem to tell that to people often of late. Well put, Gleeman, Lan said. The warder had that weighing look in his eyes again. I'm surprised to find you so concerned. Tom shrugged. It's known I arrived with you too. I don't care for the thought of a questioner with a hot iron telling me to repent my sins and walk in the light. That, Nynaeve put in sharply, is just one more reason for them to come home with me in the morning. Or this afternoon, for that matter. The sooner we are away from you and on our way back to Emmons Field, the better. We can't, Rand said, and was glad that his friends all spoke up at the same time. That way, Nynaeve's glare, that way, Nynaeve's glare had to be spread around. She spared no one as it was, but he had spoken first, and they all fell silent looking at him. Even Moraine sat back in her chair, watching him over steepled fingers. It was an effort for him to meet the wisdom's eyes. If, if we go back to Emmons Field, the Trollocs will come back too. They're hunting us. I don't know why, but they are. Maybe we can find out why in Tarval, and maybe we can find out how to stop it. It's the only way. Nynaeve threw up her hands. You sound just like Tam. He had himself carried to the village meeting and tried to convince everybody. He'd already tried with the village council. The light knows how your... Mistress Alice, she invested the name with a wagon load of scorn, managed to make him believe. He has a might of sense, usually, more than most men. In any case, the council is a pack of fools most of the time, but not foolish enough for that, and neither was anyone else. They agreed you had to be found. Then Tam wanted to be the one to come after you, and him not able to stand by himself. Foolishness must run in your family. Matt cleared his throat, then mumbled, What about my da? What did he say? He's afraid you'll try your tricks with outlanders and get your head thumped. He seemed more afraid of that than of Mistress Alice here. But then he was never much brighter than you. Matt seemed unsure how to take what she had said or how to reply or even whether to reply. I, I expect, Perrin began hesitantly, I mean, I suppose Master Luhan was not too pleased about my leaving either. Did you expect him to be? Nynaeve shook her head disgustedly and looked at Egwene. Maybe I should not be surprised at this harebrained idiocy from you three, but I thought others had more judgment. Egwene sat back, so she was shielded by Perrin. I left a note, she said faintly. She tugged at the hood of her cloak as if she was afraid her unbound hair showed. I explained everything. Nynaeve's face darkened. Rand sighed. The wisdom was on the point of one of her tongue lashings, and it looked as if it might be a first-rate one. If she took a position in the heat of anger, if she said she intended to see them back in Emmons Field no matter what anybody said, for instance, she would be nearly impossible to budge. He opened his mouth. A note, Nynaeve began, just as Moraine said, you and I must still talk, Wisdom. If Rand could have stopped himself, he would have, but the words poured out as if it were a floodgate he had opened instead of his mouth. All this is very well, but it doesn't change anything. We can't go back. We have to go on. He spoke more slowly toward the end, and his voice sank, so he finished in a whisper, with the Wisdom and the Aes Sedai both looking at him. It was the sort of look he received if he came on women talking women's circle business, the sort that said he had stepped in where he did not belong. He sat back, wishing he were somewhere else. Wisdom, Maureen said, you must believe that they are safer with me than they would be back in the two rivers. Safer? Nynaeve tossed her head dismissively. You are the one who brought them here where the white cloaks are. The same white cloaks who, if the Gleeman tells the truth, may harm them because of you. Tell me, how are they safer, I Sedai? 
There are many dangers from which I cannot protect them, Moraine agreed, any more than you can protect them from being struck by lightning if they go home. But it is not lightning of which they must be afraid, nor even white cloaks. It is the Dark One, and minions of the Dark One. From those things I can protect. Touching the true source, touching Saidar, gives me that protection as it does to every Aes Sedai. Nynaeve's mouth tightened skeptically. Moraine's grew tighter, too, with anger, but she went on, her voice hard on the edge of patience. Even those poor men who find themselves wielding the power for a short time gain that much, though sometimes touching Saidine protects, and sometimes the taint makes them more vulnerable. But I, or any Aes Sedai, can extend my protection to those close by me. No fade can harm them as long as they are close to me as they are right now. No Trolloc can come within a quarter of a mile without land knowing it, feeling the evil of it. Can you offer them half as much if they return to Emmons Field with you? You stand up straw men, Nynaeve said. We have a saying in the two rivers, whether the bear beats the wolf or the wolf beats the bear, the rabbit always loses. Take your contest somewhere else and leave Emmons Field folk out of it. Egwene, Moraine said after a moment, take the others and leave the wisdom alone with me for a while. Her face was impassive. Nynaeve squared herself at the table as if getting ready for an all-in wrestling match. Egwene bounced to her feet, her desire to be dignified obviously warring with her desire to avoid a confrontation with the wisdom over her unbraided hair. She had no difficulty gathering up everyone by eye, though. Matt and Perrin scraped back their chairs hurriedly, making polite murmurs while trying not to actually run on their way out. Even Lan started for the door at a signal from Moraine, drawing Tom with him. Rand followed, and the warder shut the door behind them, then took up guard across the ha hallway. Under Lan's eyes, the others moved on down the hall a short distance. They were not to be allowed even the slightest chance of eavesdropping. When they had gone far enough to suit him, Lan leaned back against the wall. Even without his color-shifting cloak, he was so still that it would be easy not to notice him until you were right on him. The gleeman muttered something about better things to do with his time and left with a stern, remember what I said, over his shoulder to the boys. No one else seemed inclined to leave. What did he mean? Egwene asked absently, her eyes on the door that hid Moraine and Nynaeve. She kept fiddling with her hair as if torn between continuing to hide the fact that it was no longer braided and pushing back the hood of her cloak. He gave us some advice, Matt said. Perrin gave him a sharp look. He said not to open our mouths until we were sure what we were going to say. That sounds like good advice, Egwene said, but clearly she was not really interested. Rand was engrossed in his own thoughts. How could Nynaeve possibly be part of it? How could any of them be involved with Trollocs and Fades and Baalzaman appearing in their dreams? It was crazy. He wondered if Min had told Moraine about Nynaeve. What are they saying in there? He had no idea how long he had been standing there when the door finally opened. Nynaeve stepped out and gave a start when she saw Lan. The warder murmured something that made her toss her head angrily. Then he slipped past her through the door. She turned toward Rand, and for the first time he realized the others had all quietly disappeared. He did not want to face the wisdom alone, but he could not get away now that he had met Nynaeve's eye. A particularly searching eye, he thought, puzzled. What did they say? He drew himself up as she came closer. She indicated Tam's sword. That seems to fit you now though I would like it better if it did not. You've grown, Rand. In a week? He laughed, but it sounded forced, and she shook her head as if he did not understand. Did she convince you, he asked? It, it really is the only way. He paused, thinking of Min's sparks. Are you coming with us? Nynaeve's eyes opened wide. Coming with you? Why would I do that? Mavra Mallon came up from Devon Ride to see to things until I return, but she'll be wanting to get back as soon as she can. I still hope to make you see sense and come home with me. We can't. He thought he saw something move at the still open door, but they were alone at the hallway. 
You told me that, and she did too, Nene frowned. If she wasn't mixed up in it, I said I are not to be trusted, Rand. You sound as if you really do believe us, he said slowly. What happened at the village meeting? Nynaeve looked back at the doorway before answering. There was no movement there now. It was a shambles, but there is no need for her to know we can't handle our affairs any better than that. And I believe only one thing. You are all in danger as long as you are with her. Something happened, he insisted. Why do you want us to go back if you think there's even a chance we are right? And why you at all? As soon send the mayor himself as the wisdom. You have grown, she smiled, and for a moment her amusement had him shifting his feet. I can think of a time when you would not have questioned where I chose to go or what I chose to do, wherever or whatever it was. A time just a week ago. He cleared his throat and pressed on stubbornly. It doesn't make sense. Why are you really here? She half glanced at the still empty doorway, then took his arm. Let's walk while we talk. He let himself be led away, and when they were far enough from the door not to be overheard, she began again. As I said, the meeting was a shambles. Everybody agreed someone had to be sent after you, but the village split into two groups. One wanted you rescued, though there was some considerable argument over how that was to be done, considering that you were, were with uh, the likes of her. He was glad she was remembering to watch what she said. The others believed Tam, he said. Not exactly, but they thought you shouldn't be among strangers either, especially not with someone like her. Either way, though, almost every man wanted to be one of the party. Tam and Bran Alvere with the scales of the of office around his neck, and Harold Luhan till Alspet made him sit down. Even Sen Bui. The lights save me from men who think with the hair on their chests. Though I don't know as there are any other kind. She gave a hearty sniff and looked up at him an accusing glance. At any rate, I could see it would be another day, perhaps more, before they came to any decision, and somehow, somehow I was sure that we did not dare wait that long. So I called the women's circle together and told them what had to be done. I cannot say they liked it, but they saw the right of it. And that is why I am here, because the men around Emmons Field are stubborn woolheads. They're probably still arguing about who to send, though I left word I would take care of it. Nynaeve's story explained her presence, but it did nothing to reassure him. She was still determined to bring them back with her. What did she say to you in there? He asked. Moraine would surely have covered every argument, but if there was one she had missed, he would make it. More of the same, Nynaeve replied, and she wanted to know about you boys, to see if she could reason out why you have attracted the kind of attention you have, she said. She paused, watching him out of the corner of her eye. She tried to disguise it, but most of all, she wanted to know if any of you was born outside the two rivers. His face was suddenly as taut as a drumhead. He managed a hoarse chuckle. She does think of some odd things. I hope you assured her we're all, we're all Emmonsfield born. Of course, she replied. There had only been a heartbeat's pause before she spoke. So brief he would, not have, he would have missed it if he had not been watching for it. He tried to think of something to say, but his tongue felt like a piece of leather. She knows. She was the wisdom after all, and the wisdom was supposed to know everything about everyone. If she knows it was no fever dream, how oh, light help me, father. Are you all right? Nynaeve asked. He said, said I wasn't his son when he was delirious with the fever. He said he found me. I thought, I, I thought it was just, his throat began to burn and he had to stop. Oh, Rand. She stopped and took his face in both hands. She had to reach up to do it. People say strange things in a fever, twisted things, things that are not true or real. Listen to me. Tam Althor ran away seeking adventure when he was a boy no older than you. I can just remember when he came back to Emmons Field, a grown man with a red-haired outlander wife and a babe in swaddling clothes. I remember Carrie Althor cradling that child in her arms with as much love given and delight taken as I have ever seen from any woman with a babe. 
her child, Rand. You. Now you straighten up and stop this foolishness. Of course, he said. I was born outside the two rivers. Of course. Maybe Tam had been having a fever dream, and maybe he had found a baby after a battle. Why didn't you tell her? It is none of any outlander's business. Were any of the others born outside? As soon as the question was out, he shook his head. No, don't answer. It's none of my business either. But it would be nice to know if Maureen had some special interest in him over and above what she had in the whole lot of them. Would it? No, it isn't your business, Nynaeve agreed. It might not mean anything. She could just be searching blindly for a reason, any reason why those things are after you. After all of you. Rand managed to grin. Then you do believe they're chasing us. Nynaeve shook her head wryly. You've certainly learned how to twist words since you met her. What are you going to do? He asked. She studied him. He met her eyes steadily. Today... I am going to have a bath. For the rest, we will have to see, won't we? That's the end of the chapter.